Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a seascape. I'm also going to be throwing in some really fun activities for you to practice uh, to learn how to do this kind of thing really easily. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, buddy. He's man in chat tonight, so if you've got questions while I'm painting this, you can ask those. And we've got a brand new intro video. I'm super excited about it. So thank you to Ben Eslick, our uh, helper who helped me <laughs> with this new intro today. We've been working on it for a few months now uh, and uh, we've got it for you tonight. So I hope you like it. All right, let's go. Really fun, right? I like it. I like it. It's got our new logo. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Feels very fresh and clean, and yeah. So that'll be, uh, yeah, our new <laughs> intro from now on. <laughs> love it. Uh, Angela oh, is currently dancing. Small things you. like that make me so happy. I don't know why. It's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> oh, but anyhow, okay. <laughs> Let's go over our colors. I've got a nine by twelve inch canvas today, by the way, that we'll be using uh, for this. It's and I haven't done anything to it uh, tonight. I'm just, it's just plain old white ready to go here. Um, there we go. I've got carbon black, burnt sienna, uh, quinacridone burnt, uh, I'm sorry, quinacridone magenta, uh, cadmium yellow light, and thalo blue green shade. And then uh, this one is unbleached titanium, titanium white, and some zinc white, and some glass glazing liquid. If you don't have all these whites, that's fine. I just have them for convenience sake. But um, the the zinc white is kind of nice to have for clouds and things like that. We'll probably do be doing a few minimal clouds um, for this tonight, and so having that is usually helpful for that. All right, and um, if you missed our video last week, we did a um, a ombre mountain scene that um mark's gonna try to hand it to me here ombre mountain scene and uh for our activity or practice activity we had this color string that you could create using two colors any two colors and then you can it helps you build something like this um so tonight we're going to do something similar we're going to have an activity um, for our seascape that will help you build your your skills to um, make it a little bit easier. So we're going to do per some perspective mark making and some value and depth building mark making um, a little bit later. All right, so there's the teaser. We'll have a little bit of homework. Something that you can do just in a notebook on your own. Um, just some valuable kind of skills that you can kind of check your progress and see, you know, I don't know, learn some things on the side that can help you in all of your acrylic painting tutorials so or list you know paintings and not even just tutorials whatever you get what i'm saying i know from experience that having the right tool to do the job is part of it and then yes. having the skill to use it is the other part exactly so you can buy the paintbrush but if you don't know how to use it right right yeah exactly so this will kind of help uh, break it, break things down into smaller steps so that it makes it a little bit easier when you see something like this. So you can kind of recognize certain skills that you already have um, that we've worked on in other ways that you can put into these different paintings that we're doing. So that's the idea behind it, at least. All right. So for this one, um, I think I'm going to do a color string so we'll add uh, another skill onto what we did last week we'll we'll do it one more time so you can kind of get um a little bit more reinforcement on what we've already done so i'm going to do that um and then we'll have um we'll do the background actually let me go ahead and do the background first and then we can while that's drying we can work on our color string and that way it'll be um Ready. So I'm going to, on this one, our our horizon line is kind of right in the middle, which I don't really love. So I think I, we just have to decide, do we want more ocean or do we want more sky? Um, in this one, I think we're kind of building more ocean. So the sky, the clouds are not our main focus today. So I think I'm going to come up about a third um, and cut off the top there around the third mark and I'll be right in here somewhere ish 
I'm just going to mark it with a piece of chalk or something. All right, there we go. So we'll kind of have, that'll be our, I don't know, I kind of want to leave a little bit more room than that. It does feel a little crowded. Let's go down a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. So just a, not quite on the third, but close to it. All right, so this will be our sky up here. We'll have the ocean down here. So let's go ahead and put in our sky and then we can um, do our color string for our water and I'll show you what I want you to do for that. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? I think they're doing good. Doing good? I know I am. Good. Other than the stupid snow. I know we got snow. <clears throat> We're having lots of fun snow. I like snow. As long as we have a nice cozy indoors to go and stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't like to be in the snow. I like to watch it from the inside of my house. <laughs> my nice warm house. <laughs> I think Mark growing up in New England area, he didn't. I had plenty of snow. It wasn't as magical. I don't need any more. I grew up in the desert, so snow to me is like super amazing doesn't matter how long we've lived here for like 30 years and we get snow at least once a year usually and it doesn't stay long which well, is nice well like i said before if it was like 80 degrees when it snowed <laughs> no problem no problem at all all day i don't think that's quite possible there well, see that's not my fault i'm trying to build up enough of this color to get to do my sky i don't know why i'm building so much of it because i really don't have that much sky up here now that i look at it but i'm just you can see I'm just adding just the tiniest little corner of blue. It it tints super strong, like even just that little bit. Look how much it changes my white. So start out with a good amount of white, and don't try to add your white to your blue because you're never going to get it there. You want to start out with your light value here, and that looks pretty good. I think that'll, that'll work. So I'm just going to go ahead and go across, and actually this little line will kind of help me. So I'm not going to go quite to it, but that'll be kind of where I'm going to put my pink. So... I go ahead and do that all the way across and get a good, fairly thick coat on here. I'm using a large brush. I didn't go over my brushes, but I'll mention them as I use them. This is a two inch Aspen flat, Mottler it's called. So I'm gonna go down and kind of right in here somewhere, I'm gonna transition to just white. Um, cause it's going to go to yellow and I don't want the blue and the yellow to really meet cause I don't want it to turn orange or green. And obviously the blue and the yellow is going to make green. So I want my, let me go ahead and rinse that out. I'm not cleaning it in my water. I'm just kind of wiping it on my paper towel to try to get the paint off of it. And then clean it off. Okay. Then I'm going to get the plain white, no blue in here at all. I'm going to go across this whole bottom section here. I'm trying to get rid of my chalk line there that I did to really push on that to get it rid of it. Okay. I want to do this while my blue is wet so that I can kind of blend up into it a little bit, just a little. Okay. So right in there and I'm going to get a tiny bit of yellow. I'm just mixing this on my brush as I go, but make sure that you're really pressing down so you're getting it mixed through pretty well. White. And then if I want to keep my white and my blue separated, I can do the yellow at the bottom and the white on the top, and that way I'll have less chance of that yellow and the blue mating. So that white on my brush is gonna kind of push that blue up. That looks really good. It's a little bit light. Get a little bit more intense yellow and some magenta now. And let's go right along the line. I'm just gonna go over the top of the line with that. And I'm kind of holding my brush at like a three quarter inch angle because it's actually a little bit big for this canvas now that I'm looking at it. It's kind of a small area here. This brush is pretty wide. It's covering almost half that space. So let me get a little bit smaller brush here. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of a catch 22 because the larger brushes you can cover a bigger area a little bit easier. So I'm gonna get a eight bright, but the smaller brushes give you a little more control. So you kind of have to just figure out what you're needing. <laughs> and adjust accordingly. 
So I'm going to get a little bit of the phthalo blue. Actually, I want, I want just the phthalo blue in magenta, I think. Magenta and a tiny bit of, of phthalo blue, just the tiniest little bit is all you need. And, and my white. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to get a little bit more of this red and add it. This red had the yellow mixed in, so I'm going to add just a little bit of that to it. If I added all three of these together, it's going to make a gray. So I want to be careful about how much of these two I'm mixing together. I want my prim primary color to be the magenta kind of pinky purple color. There we go. I'm going to go along my rise line with that and kind of pull up and do this. If you want to mix up your colors ahead of time, you can. Um, sometimes it can take a while to mix those colors and by the time you get them mixed, this part that you've already done is dry and then you've, you know, you kind of lost your opportunity to blend. So I would say speed over accuracy. You can always go back over this, but I would try to get it blended while everything's wet still. So do, uh, I mean by accuracy of color, you know, you don't, this color doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it as close as you can. Let me get a little bit more bright yellow. Work that up. So get it as close to Angela as I can. Got it. <laughs> mm, there. <laughs> har, har. <laughs> I probably could have started with a yellow background. I kind of feel like my, um, my yellow got a little muddy. So I may end up... A little naughty? Is that what you said? Muddy. Oh, muddy. <laughs> muddy. <laughs> naughty little yellow. Yeah, the yellow's been very naughty tonight. <laughs> What kind of show is this? <laughs> or heard your kite color paints that before. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get some white here. We're copywriting that name, by the way, so don't try to copy it. Naughty white. <laughs> Naughty yellow. Naughty yellow. Oh, that's right. Naughty yellow. Dirty white. Dirty white. Tidy white. Tidy white. Titanium white. <laughs> All right, sorry, we're being silly tonight. Apologize. <laughs> tonight? Yeah, true. Okay. Not much different. Okay. Just trying to add a little bit more yellow, bring that yellow up a little higher. That looks good. We're going to have some clouds in front of this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but I just want to get it close. All right, so while that's drying, we'll make our color string. And now that I've covered up my entire thing with paint, I'm going to have to scrape it all off and start fresh here. But um, I've got a handy dandy scraper here for that. So I don't need any of these colors for anything else. So I'm just going to scrape them all off and get them out of the way. I didn't mix up a ton of them either, so that's nice. Okay, that looks good. What was that? Oh, that was my bell. <laughs> Your bell? My bell. Oh. <laughs> my <laughs> little Christmas. Yeah, I've got a little, uh, I think it's Indian or something. I don't know. Yes, yeah. That Mark bought for me. It's got little birds on it. It's a little string of stuffed birds and not real ones, obviously. You know, fabric. And... Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just sounded <laughs> I don't have taxidermy birds in my studio nothing against that I'm just saying we don't I don't have it um, but yeah it's got a little bell at the end I touched it alright there we go that'll work let me get some more white hair uh, and And we will make a color string for our C colors. So just like last week, what you're going to want to do is have two colors as your main colors. So figure out what your darkest color is going to be, and then you're going to add white to that. So basically, or you can have 
two mixed colors, though. They don't have to be pure colors. So, like, I don't have to go with just phthalo blue and white. But I want to get um, both of them as close to um, the right bright and light and, and dark shades as I can so that um, the middle colors that we're mixing are going to be the ones that are the right shade for what we're going to do here. So it'll make more sense as I go here. So I'm going to grab some, I have my white here. I'm going to grab some phthalo blue. I'm going to grab a fairly good amount of it because I'm going to need a lot of this shadow color in my water. And I'm going to get some burnt sienna. And so I'm doing about, not quite 50-50. And this is going to create a nice teal for me. And that might have been a little too much brown. I can kind of scrape through and I'll be able to tell kind of, no, oh, it looks pretty good. And then what I can do is sort of test it with my white to just kind of see what color I'm getting from it. Over here. For my mid values and see if that's kind of close to what I want my water to look like and I think that's pretty darn close so I'm gonna call that pretty good successful so I think it was like two parts blue to one part burnt sienna something like that will probably get you close to this teal color and if you don't have this thalo blue you can use the turquoise colors if you have a turquoise if you don't have turquoise or you have like a color like cobalt teal that's like a, a turquoise that has white already built into it you could add black or um, something like that to make it darker um, for your darker scale to start with but you want to start with the darkest color you don't want to you don't want to have multiple um, colors on either end of your color string if that makes sense so um, we want to start out with a let's go ahead and just grab some of this and we're going to start out with that as our darkest color there ooh, subscribe what? yeah, hit a subscribe button there did that do the wrong thing? or were uh, you meant, did you mean to do I that? I had it turned on <clears throat> No, I did not mean to do that. Okay, I didn't think so. I did it earlier on purpose, but ah, not just now. Now you did it again. So we really want you to subscribe. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it. Or the next time YouTube suggests, I will run an ad. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? So <clears throat> a couple months ago, YouTube is... Getting yeah. a little bit of yellow and adding that to my white. So I'm going to start out with a white that's got a little bit of yellow in it. Is my other color. Check. Go. Sorry. YouTube a couple months ago added this feature within the uh, streaming studio mm -hmm. that says, hey, you know, why don't you run an ad? You know, people right. like to watch ads kind of a deal. When it pops up, I'll read it to you. Okay. But it, or fine. take a picture and show it to you yeah. later. It's hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, no. Don't want to stop my show to have a commercial. Mm -hmm. All right, so making sure that I have a clean brush here. I'm going to add my white at the bottom here of my string. So now I've got my darkest and my lightest value. This one's not quite, this was kind of transparent when I put it on. So I might put that on just one more time in a little bit thicker form so that you get to see how dark it really is. There we go. Full dark and light, and it doesn't really matter which way you do it, just as long as you kind of have it figured out which is which and I'm going to do this one is they that last week was Prussian blue this one is thalo blue green shade I just put a GS plus burnt sienna and if you want to put the ratio two to one or something like that I don't know that wasn't yeah, I think that was about the ratio. And then this one is titanium white. And a touch of, of uh, cad yellow. Light. Small. Small amount. All right. So I'm going to, just like last week, I'm going to take some of this brightest color and set it aside for our highlights in our water. So I'm going to just set it over here, 
two years later, and I'm going to save quite a bit of it. There we go. And so then we're going to build, we're going to mix this color into this color. So I'm going to take just a little bit of it. I don't need a lot. And I'm going to start mixing it in. I kind of started off to the side just to see how dark I was getting it. So that looks pretty good. Start out carefully. And especially if you've got a color like phthalo blue that has really high tinting strength, it's going to really change your color really fast. So that might have almost been too much. But I don't have a ton of transition color in my water, so I'm okay with this being my next color. I'm going to grab a little bit of on my, my brush and put it on my color string next right here. And then we'll do our next one. So this is, again, really, really great basic way of, of uh, mixing your colors and having um, graduated values of your colors so and I'll show you how we're going to use it on our workbook here in a minute and I probably should have mixed up a lot more of that white mm -hmm. no I just I'm realizing because I'm going to use it on my workbook so getting a little bit more of that blue mixing another color hey real quick mm -hmm. somebody wanted to know could they use blue and phthalo green yeah absolutely what kind of blue are they talking about like oh I don't know Oh, to make the teal instead of burnt sienna. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure what they're what what mm -hmm. they're asking, but but yes, I'm I mean you probably yeah, just a little bit. All right, so let's use save some of that for later, and we'll we need to leave enough to mix our next color each time. So so you're getting the idea, and we're building towards our dark color. So this next one I want to be kind of halfway through. So I'm going to get a little bit more. And each time we do another um, color string, we're adding a little bit more of our darker color. So there we go. So at first we're staying pretty conservative about it. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit darker than that. There we go. I'm going to wipe this off because I've got some of the other paint on there. Try that again. The reason I'm mix, moving it over here is because this is going to start getting crumbly soon. As soon as it starts to dry, it'll start to get kind of crumbly on me, and I don't want to have to deal with that. So I'm going to put that there, get some of that color, put it here. It's nice, nice basic blue. That's going to be really good for our seascape. Nice and not too brown. Okay, then I'm going to add a pretty good amount of my blue to this next one because I've only got two colors left. So I'm going to start to really alter it a little bit more. This looks good. This might be a little bit, a little bit dark. So what I can do is grab a little bit of my original color and add it back in to just soften it just slightly. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to kind of scoop it up on my brush here, mix it with my brush. Okay. Looks good. Scrape it all off. And I'm not ending up with a whole lot of this. I really needed to start with a lot more of the white. And then we're just going to try to mix our last color so yeah start out with a lot more of that white because we just don't have a whole lot left here to deal with okay 
There you go. And then our last color is obviously our dark, dark color there. All right, this one probably could be a little bit darker. Might go a little bit darker with it. There we go. Okay, but you get the idea. Okay, so let me, I'm just gonna scrape off the rest of this. Leave it over here. That color is kind of a little bit lighter than I want it to be, but I can, I can mix more of this. I just kind of am showing you guys this to give you an idea of how to create these different ombre values of your colors. So it's just a practice. You don't have to actually do it every time you do a painting, and I don't necessarily. Usually I'm just kind of blending these as I go along. But um, let's go ahead and we'll start out by just painting our background with a kind of a mid-value color. We'll get this kind of mid-value blue here, and I'm just going to put it on here. I'm going to try to get as much of this as I can before it dries. And we'll put this down, and then once this dries, we can work on some more other stuff. I'm going to get this darker one and do it kind of a little bit along that horizon line. I'm going to get some tape and cover my horizon line with a nice straight line so that I have a really good straight line. I'll go up just a little bit. Okay, looks good. Really press down there, and then that way I can go right across that line with this. Oops, I just splattered my paper. Darn it. <laughs> and why is it important to have a straight horizon line? Well, because our water is going to be even, you know, water levels itself out. And so if we have a crooked horizon line, our water looks like it's flowing on off the canvas. <laughs> And I can go a little bit lighter as I'm going down here. And we'll talk about that as we talk about our, our uh, mark making um, practice activity. And, you know, obviously, if you've already feel like you've got a grasp on this, you don't have to do these activities. I just feel like it's a, it's a really nice way to kind of practice off the canvas, takes the pressure off. You can just kind of do it um, when you want to just get your paints out and do something, anything, you know, maybe you, you're just like, I'm not really sure what I want to do, but it like just gives you something to do. So there we go. So we've got, it's okay. It's a streaky. I'm going side to side. So I want any streaks to be um, horizontal. So just go ahead and put it on streakies. No problem. We're going to be adding lots of layers to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that tape on there for now. And I'm going to set this aside to dry while we're doing this next part. Um, you want me to go dry? No, it's fine. I think it'll be good. All right. So this is... This first one is all about the size of our marks and how creating um, different size marks on the canvas will create perspective without doing anything with color or anything else like that. We can use the same colors and um, just by putting them in a certain different um, sizing, um, it will create this illusion of depth, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Seascapes are a perfect way of doing it, too. This is, I use this all the time when I'm doing my seascapes. Okay, so create your horizon line wherever it is. doesn't matter. I'm going to make it pretty close to the top because we have all this space to work with. And then whatever your bottom to the horizon line is, you're going to mark that in half. And I'm going to do it very lightly because I don't want to mark it too high. And then I'm going to mark it in half again, just little dots. And then mark it in half again. And that'll probably get us close enough. And we can continue to mark it in half again and again if we want to. But this will give us a good starting point. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've got like different sizes. So what I'm going to do is grab, I'm just going to grab, let's go ahead and 
get a brush that has a good point on it because by the time I go up here, I want little marks. Um, and what I'm gonna do is take any color. So I'm gonna take a color that I've got a lot of. I'm gonna get my magenta here. And so this will be a good color actually to use to show you what I'm talking about because it it won't matter um, the color that you use as long as your mark marks are the right size um, and shape and whatever you will get that illusion of depth. So we're going to take this magenta and I've got a kind of a medium round brush. This is the number two um, Princeton Round Summit series. And I'm going to start making some marks. And in the foreground here, I'm going to make my marks fairly, fairly long and fairly thick. So I'm going to press down and fill in with marks that are They don't have to all be long, but this will give us some. But mostly, I want my 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 marks to be fairly long and fairly thick. Okay, so kind of like that. And then when I as I approach that halfway mark, I'm going to start to shorten them just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a transition, because it's not like a perfect. You know, you switch from one to the other. We're gonna start to make them a little skinnier and a little bit shorter. And then by the time I get to that halfway mark, these marks that I've made in the beginning here, these these first marks. So let's take one of them. This is kind of an average size mark. I'm gonna take that width and that length and make it in half. So halfway to the horizon, I'm gonna half the size of my mark. So now I'm going to take that and say, okay, so it's going to be about that long now. And so from here to here, I'm gonna make marks that are only this size, you know? And again, it's not a perfect rule, so I'm gonna do a couple that are kind of transitioning, but basically we're gonna kind of try to keep it in that same general, little bit skinnier and a little bit shorter. Okay. And so I'm going to fill in all the way to here with that. And I'm keeping these side to side just because this is water that we're doing, but this would work for any number of objects. So you could do these in circles. You could do like hay bales. It would be the same thing. You know, as you get farther and farther away, they're going to get, you know, thinner and whoops that one went down but that's okay and then as I approach this line I'm going to go a little bit a little bit thinner and a little bit smaller just because again we're kind of transitioning here getting farther away but look at how we're already getting a little bit of perspective just by making our marks thinner and closer together and um, shorter in length okay then this next from here to here, we're going to go half again. So each time we half that distance, we're going to half our size of our marks. So here, let's get an average one from down here at the bottom. So let's say this one right here, somewhere in here. So we're going to go about that size. So we're going to talk, we're talking about quarter inch and skinnier. So we're going to start doing those and those will be all in here. And this is exactly what happens in our water, in our landscape. And the more you kind of recognize this, the more you start to see it. And you'll be like, oh, wow. You'll see it in all kinds of things. Um, and I'm kind of making some of these too long. But it's okay. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to have some in you know, some longer. Some of these are going to touch each other and kind of can create a shape that's a little bit longer than others and we want to keep it random so you don't want it to be exactly perfect either so there we go so there's our next layer and by the time we get to this horizon line we're basically going to be making dots so I'm going to take these again and just start dabbing very 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 tiny now very tiny very very short teeny tiny and what happens too is they will um, start to kind of merge together in, um, in size. They, they're kind of, you won't, you'll almost like just start to see like lines of D dots and that's all you'll, you'll notice. You won't actually see any actual 
lines like we have down here. You'll just see these little dots. And if you, you can kind of get fancier with this as you get comfortable with this, you know, working on this and doing it, um, you can start to create like, um, like a, other colors inside here. So you could take your your thing here. So there you go. Look at that. We've already created this, this illusion of distance just by changing the size of our marks. Um, and then when you combine this with things like value and colors, you get much more dynamic results. So that's what I was saying. You could take this and you could create another um, thing where like you maybe have a moon or something here or a sun and you create um, these two lines here and all of the marks inside this narrow cone are going to be one color and all the ones on the outside of it are a different color and you're going to create even more value just by changing your colors. But this this um, lesson is just about mark making. So I'm going to do on the side here kind of our size of our marks so you kind of get an idea of what we were doing. So that one was long, this one was half that size. This one was half that size again and even skinnier and then skinnier still and up here was just a tiny dot. So there we go. All right, and then this next one is going to be more about the um, the values. So it doesn't really matter the marks that you're making it will matter more kind of what we're doing on top of those marks. So I'm going to just kind of put in some color here really quickly. Having color here will just save us time. You could do this with marks. You don't have to do the color first, but this will just save me a little bit of time. It's been my favorite show so far. Really? Yeah. Why? I keep seeing my name. Mark, <laughs> saying your name. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go ahead and use this brush. So what we would do is use a color in our color string here, which I was originally going to do, but I ran out because I didn't make enough. So I'm just going to make another color. I'm going to make a light pink here. And I'm going to make some marks using my light pink on my paper. This is all about value, so we're going to want to have some contrast. There we go. All right, doesn't really matter what size they are, just making marks that are a different value. And by value, we just mean light and dark, okay? So what we're gonna do here, and what we'll do in our water, is we're going to take the light values and we're going to go right up underneath them with a darker value. So I'm going to take a little bit of black and my magenta and I'm going to go right up underneath them with a little bit of a darker value. And what that's immediately going to do is kind of pop those lighter values forward in our, now they're, they're looking like they're popping out of the canvas a little bit more. And then I'm going to take a kind of in between the light and dark, which is similar to our background color, but maybe just a little bit different, <clears throat> and come just underneath and just above, and just kind of soften those transitions just a little bit. And this will give it that flowing look that we're going to do with our water. So just a little bit of that background color with maybe a little bit of the dark color, just a little softener. It really doesn't matter what color. You just kind of want to have just a little softening because it's very stark right here. So you just want a little transition between these two, just slight. And there you go. And you can play with this in any number of ways. And then you can go back in and you can get some really bright white and just like maybe tap in some marks that are a little bit smaller. You can play with textures. So I'm gonna tap in, and this is exactly what I'm gonna do on my waves. I'm gonna tap in some little textured highlights, 
and we're going to create these areas where it looks like our water is flowing and moving in and out. And, and these are going to be closer together. I've kind of left these sort of spaced apart quite a bit. And of course, the colors are off, so it looks a little funky. You're probably not not seeing the full effect of it. But I can go back in then and kind of just do some random marks in between to kind of fill in your dead spaces. And then you kind of get a bit of a better idea. I don't love those colors <laughs> for this, but you get the idea. So um, these are your two lessons or activities for the week. Play with them, see what you can do, but try to get, and, and I, I don't think I went a little, like quite dark enough with my dark values here even. So you could even go a little bit more bold with it and really give a super definition super definite contrast between your light and your dark areas and just have like a little bit of a medium color in between your white and your dark areas. Okay, we'll, we'll put these all together in our water here and it'll make more sense. All right. Get a little bit more magenta here. ran out. So that is, this is creating, creating form um, with using values. So that's what that one is. And I, I, I really want to redo that one because I don't really like how it turned out <laughs> with those colors. It looks funky, but hopefully you get the idea. And we'll be doing that on our water. So as we do it with the blue colors, it'll look a whole lot better, hopefully. All right, so we're going to use those marks that we were using um, from before. I'm gonna grab my darkest color and I'm gonna just go ahead and use this brush, this flat that I have, the eight. And I'm just gonna tap in the distance to make those little little tiny marks. And I'm, I can use the corner of my brush if I wanna keep it keep them really small but I'm just going to make some marks there you could even um, just kind of brush out. I mean I've done it different ways in different videos so you could even just kind of brush side to side and leave kind of little streaks um, and not make any marks at all it just depends on how much detail you want in this background um, so I'm not going for uber realism here I'm just kind of going for um, You know, kind of nice painterly look. So as I get down, I'm gonna go a little bit longer with my brush strokes and a little bit wider. Start to build up little sections of the surf. And you can see in our picture that we've got some areas back in here where the surf is rolling over itself. And that's where we're gonna have those dark areas like in that second um, example where we want those really dark values underneath those areas. So just kind of keep an eye on that. And we're gonna, but right now we're just kind of building out some marks in our water. And then as I get closer, I'm gonna start to kind of blend it out a little bit, kind of soften it up. And there's some areas that are hitting, that are getting light hit on them, like reflections, and they're not as dark. So I'm gonna leave some of these areas without some of this dark and start to get a little bit lighter and a little bit more contrast. And that's kind of generally what happens too is as you get closer to the bottom, you're gonna get a little bit more contrast. I probably should have done that with my, with my um, values um, study too, is we could have started using lighter colors, more contrast in the, the, foreground and um, and uh, darker colors in the background. That also will create depth and distance. But here I'm going to do my lighter color, kind of mid-tone color here. And then I'm going to figure out where I want this kind of rolling surf that kind of comes about midway. And I'm going to make more of this a little dark thalo blue here. 
And it's going to be right in here somewhere. And then there's that darker one back in here. Okay. Again, kind of keep them fairly small. They're getting bigger as we get closer to the bottom, though. And then I, we do have some beach, so I want to leave some of that. I didn't, I didn't leave room for that, so I'm going to leave this bottom section for some beach here. And let me paint that in really quick to get some of my unbleached titanium and some burnt sienna. A little bit of my yellow, or my um, magenta. I like it to be a little bit pink. So we'll put that in for our beach color. And then we're going to have a section of reflected light that is kind of our light yellowish color from the sky. And I'm mixing that with it. I'm going to use that as my Kind of transition into the ocean color and this is this line here is just going to be kind of a ripple so we can kind of wiggle it and then we're just going to blend this down into our dark color or our beach color leave a sort of line but it does kind of it's kind of soft along that edge it is kind of a reflection but it doesn't have to be super harsh it can be kind of soft and blendy so if we do this while we right after we put in that first dark burnt sienna color we can get kind of a nice soft transition in our water there might go a little bit more yellow even maybe a little bit more white yeah there we go and this color should be our our, our um, sky color so this should match the pink in our sky because this is this is a reflection this is wet sand that is reflecting our sky okay that looks good clean this out Santa there. Lift it off my color. All right, so let's um, start putting in some of these lighter values of our blue. So we've got kind of the mid and dark tones in, so we'll start to build those in, and these will really show up. So with these we have to be a little bit more careful with, a little bit more intentional about, and I might even kind of do a soft in-between color here and use a little bit of glaze so it's going on a little bit yeah a little bit more transparently in places so a little bit of that darker showing through it and I'm just gonna using this brush to kind of the the motion is kind of this sweeping side to side stroke okay nice okay I'm kind of doing it in the middle here this is where I'm seeing the first obvious like waves I'm gonna Kind of come up over that dark area. Remember, do the lighter color over the top of the darker, and that way we get some depth that looks like a shadow underneath it and gives it a little bit of form. Okay, I can use a mid tone to kind of soften that transition at the top there, but I'll do, I'm keeping it very small though. I don't want these to be big, these are still very far away, so we want to keep them quite small and. There we go. If we want like a really dark tunnel, we can kind of 
get a little bit of a really dark right there and create that kind of like a little bit of a fold over effect and get a little bit more of that dark. I added a little bit of black to my Bella Blue to get this. Going up underneath my waves. Don't like to use a lot of black though, so don't, so kind of be selective with how much of that you use because it can make it kind of look dull too. Okay, wiping that out. Get a little bit more of this thalo blue, a little bit more of my burnt sienna, and mix those two together. Because I'm ran out of all my mid tones, I kind of ran out of all my colors halfway up. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Again, I usually mix it this way. I don't usually mix it with the color string, so I'm not that uh, familiar with how much I'm going to need. <laughs> Obviously, a lot more than I mixed. <laughs> Remember, you want that kind of transition color between your dark and your light. So I'm coming up underneath my dark and kind of creating that value that's kind of that mid-tone that's not quite as not quite as bright as my background, but a little bit, a little bit in between. Just that buffer of color there to soften it up. Okay, looking really good. See, this is all about size of your marks and the way you're layering your your values of your colors so and I'm definitely going to add some pink too because there's some sky colors in here too that I'm seeing but I'm going to try to get this down and if I get my values light enough on here then what I can do is come back in later and add some of that pink on top and it'll kind of just tint my waves it's looking really good color here that's kind of the mid-tone still haven't even gotten to my lightest lightest color yet so I'm very carefully and slowly building up my value my lightest values are going to make the most impact so I want to save them for the for very few little areas that will really make them shine so I'm going to start kind of doing that in the foreground here I'm going to push some of these back because I didn't leave myself a lot of room for my front wave area here And let's start kind of building in some of these little lacy shapes. And these are kind of small little, and I think I might need a different brush for this because they're tiny little foamy marks that kind of crisscross each other in this foreground. Don't cover up all my dark areas, but we're already looking like ocean. I'm liking it. It's definitely coming together. Okay. Now I'm getting my lightest value, and I'm going to just kind of start to tap it in where I want some surfy areas, and I might change to a different brush because this one's giving me kind of straight lines, which is not really what I'm wanting. It was okay back here, but of where that's not too bad that's okay and I'm not going exactly by the picture I'm just using it kind of as a general reference for kind of colors and wave shapes but I'm kind of creating my own little scene here with it once you kind of get the fundamentals of how to build a scene like this with your values and your marks you you kind of can do whatever you want with it, which is nice. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me get my smaller round brush here. And I'm gonna get my lightest values. And I'm going to come up here on my surf and just kind of go along the edge, create my little surf line. Just kind of dabbing it 
on here. And then let's just figure out how far back we want it, but we're just going to kind of create some little crisscrossing Apples marks. Keeping them fairly horizontal, but these are kind of going every which way here, creating these little foamy lines that happen. And they're kind of coming, connecting to each other and coming out into our surf. Make sure you've got enough of your dark color underneath here so you can see the contrast here. See that? It's looking good. And we could make a wave here if you wanted to. You could do whatever you want. But I'm just kind of going to go in by the reference photo here. I like the look of these lines kind of coming up into the surf. So let's go ahead and kind of have our wave kind of rising from in here and have some of these foam lines kind of drifting off into it, getting thinner and farther apart as we go into the wave. Got puppy Cam. He's been having lots of fun out in that snow. He loves the snow. It's kind of a wet snow today though, so he's been coming in and getting the zoomies and rubbing his face all over the carpet and trying to get dry. It's a little bit colder than normal. <laughs> yeah, it's going straight into the paws, <laughs> that cold. Going straight to the skin. Mm -hmm. He's got his thick coat, winter coat on, but it's not protecting against that cold, wet, rain, rainy that we had. Wet puddles in our yard. Okay, there we go. Look at that. We got some motion. Let's uh, take off our... Okay, we had a question while I was in puppy cam. Okay, So they go. said that with the lines, is it that you make them longer and larger as you go out? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're making them... You're making them wider and longer as you come down. So, I mean, it's just a general rule, but this will help create this depth like that. And so with these ones, I'm actually doing these kind of long, thin. If you if you look at the marks that I'm making, they're, they're these long, about that long. And then as I'm going in here, if you mark these ones, if you look at some of these ones, they're about half that. And then as I'm coming up here, you know, I should be getting about half that again. Um, I'm not doing this exact because if if I had a um, like a sunset, like a focal point where I was doing a reflection, you'd see it a little bit more. In this one, I'm kind of blending them together a little bit more. So it's a little bit more subtle. But if you know what's happening, you can kind of recognize it and start of, you know, if you have an area where it just doesn't look right, then you can look and see if the size of your marks is making it, you know, throwing it off, that kind of thing. This has these long, dark areas, though, that are kind of breaking that rule, you know, breaking quote unquote. Um, so it's not like a hard and fast rule that you have to do it this way and it doesn't look right if you don't, but it's just a nice like kind of thing to keep in mind um, that as you go farther away, you're going to have less detail. It's going to be a little bit less saturated color. You're going to have a little bit maybe darker um, uh, and your values are going to get a little closer together. Um, so you're not going to have as much you know, if you look back here, I only did like two values. I did my darkest dark or kind of that mid-tone and then some of the medium dark colors. And then as I get closer to the, the foreground, I'm adding a little bit more of my darker darks and my lighter lights. And by the time I get down here, I've got my darkest dark and my lightest light. And they're like right up next to each other, really intense. And that is what pulls up the, these things in the foreground forward. Um, so it's kind of a combination of all of it, the marks and the values. Um, 
And your colors can be anything, though, you know. So that's that's why I did it in this pink, even though I didn't do a very good job on it. I should have let my this background dry. It it blended a little bit too much because my background was wet still, and so it kind of created a little bit muddiness. But um, and I was kind of you know trying to do it just with general. Um, general shapes here but if I was doing wave shapes and um, if I'd done you know kind of more wave shapes and by wave shapes I mean like you can play with your mark making too so in this one I've got you know my marks are that but in my in my waves I'm making my marks closer to like this so then as I go up I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller like that. So if that helps you more, this might help you more kind of get an idea of what I'm doing in mine. Um, I'm not making just those little marks like this, you know. But you can do your ocean like this, and I have done it like that before. So it's, you know, it's it's kind of, I want to, I want you to just have it as a, um, an idea of just your marks that you're making. Whatever the mark is that you're making doesn't really matter as long as you're get, making them smaller and a little bit, you know, less uh, less value change as you get into the background. So all of my marks in the foreground can be kind of like these sweeping marks and that's kind of what I'm doing in mine. And then as I get farther away, I'm, you know, making them smaller and closer together and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. So the shape of the mark is not as important as the fact that you're kind of um, doing making them smaller as you go farther away. I hope that makes sense. So play with it. Just kind of, you know, play with it and see what you can come up with. Um, it really will help you have more confidence when you kind of sit down to do something like that if you've kind of practiced that kind of thing and have it in your brain um, before you sit down to paint. Um, Let's go ahead and do, I see some more of these kind of rolling, um, rolling um, surf down in here that I kind of missed. Just a couple more of them. And I may want to put a little bit darker color under this one because I don't have any dark under here. Finding my dark areas that I've put on here already and just kind of putting a little bit of light, lighter color on them. And if I really want them to look like they're waves crashing, then I really, you know, intensify that contrast. But some of them are just going to be kind of soft, subtle swells, so they don't all have to have that really intense contrast between the dark and the light. Not all of them are going to be waves. Full on, you know, rolling waves. They're all waves, I guess, in their own way, but not, you know what I'm saying, crashing waves that are coming towards us and spilling over. Yeah, there have been some videos I've been seeing coming out of, I think it's pretty sure it's why some surfing comp competition has gone to an area where they haven't been in the last like 20 years. Oh, really? But they've been having some monster. Oh, wow. Waves come ashore, and people mm. are too close to the shore. Oh, no. Wiping them out? People are getting knocked over, and oh, there's goodness. dust getting washed out. <laughs> the oh, life goodness. cars are like... <laughs> what? Yeah. It's insane. Okay, I'm going to use this color. Same colors as my ocean. And I'm just going to mix it in with my sky blue here. My phthalo blue the th with the white. And I'm adding a little bit of the magenta, too. I'm just going to use that up here. That's going to look really nice. I'm just going to do some very subtle, soft clouds. And I'm not going to do as many as in my photograph. I actually added the clouds to my photograph, and then I realized that I wanted to focus more on the, on the ocean than the sky, so I'm not going to go as dramatic with the sky as I had originally thought I might. I want to focus on kind of I, I think I want to and it let me know in the comments if you're liking these like little um, lessons you know because I want to continue to do these I feel like they're just going to be a way for you to 
approach acrylic painting with a little bit more confidence. Um, see your skills build and use, I don't know, just use them almost like you would at scales in a piano, you know, where you are practicing these little easy, easy steps and then you combine them to create something amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, and that's really all a painting is, is just taking all these little elements and mashing them all together. Um, but knowing how to do that and kind of getting there and having that confidence and, um, and maybe, you know, you have a, a skill that, that, that will go over that you have trouble with, or maybe you're not, you know, being able to blend these, mix these colors, um, and get, you know, a good, color string going, you know, maybe you end up with, um, you know, too many darks or too many lights or that kind of thing, you know, so doing something like this over and over again will really help you get confident with it so that when you do go sit down and paint, you got it like that. It comes much easier to you and you know, okay, I need to add a little bit more dark here to get my color the where, where I need it to be, you know, in, in that section or whatever it is, you know? So, um, I really am hoping that it will be, um, something that you guys will enjoy and, and, um, and share with me and kind of share your journey with me. Um, we have a little hashtag that we're trying to kind of use for it so that when you do share it, I can see it. Cause you know, there's so many different social media things where you can kind of share your, um, notebook, um, progress here. And I'm using, um, just some light, some of these same colors that I used in my sky earlier. So just that, um, quinacridone magenta, and some white here to create some soft pink to go around my clouds. And I want to get that that blue that we were using and kind of create that with that. I miss I switched to my 3 8 inch Willis blender too. So this will kind of give me a little bit more scrubbing action to be able to kind of push these clouds around. And again, I'm not going to go crazy with these. I just want a little bit of a little bit of clouds. Uh, I find with clouds, less is more. So just a little color. Make sure you're using the same colors that you've already got in your painting, though, and that way it'll all blend together and look nice. You know, it, it's just a really easy way of, of doing it. So use the same colors in your sky and your water and vice versa, and then you're going to know that it, it will look good. Okay, using some of that darker color. Once I get my border of my cloud kind of in and soft, then I can go back in into these some like the middle of it and just kind of pop in a little bit darker color. Give it a little bit more intensity. Looks good. Let's do something over here, which is some of this yellow or this um, pink and yeah, I do want a little bit of yellow too, I think. And be careful when you're mixing your yellow with the blue though because you can end up with gray, which is okay. Clouds are gray too, so it's not like the end of the world if you end up with a gray, but don't use a ton of it, you know. This is kind of a pretty light, soft sky. Lots of yellow and some pink. So hey, let's go ahead and use some yellow in our clouds and get it, the yellow in my white. Is that your Willow's Blender that yes. you're using? Yeah, this is the three and eighth inch Willow's Blender. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. today it's called Blender. Blender, yes, sorry. Well, that's okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Willow, but <laughs> it's just called Blender now. Hopefully nothing bad. No, yeah, exactly. And, yes, yeah, she is a real person. She is a real person. I talked to her. Yeah. I talked to her on the phone when I was trying to um, work out a um, partnership with with Princeton to... <clears throat> to uh, sponsors. Yeah, I use their brushes in my videos. They send me brushes. I don't... Uh, I was already using them, so I was, I don't promote things that I don't like and use, you know, I get a lot of, a lot of weird requests for, <laughs> for sponsoring videos, some yeah. weirder than others, but, um, like one was a toilet, uh, electric toilet plunger. 
you know, like I'm not really sure how that ties into art, but okay. So anyhow, but uh, yeah, so Princeton is awesome. We've been working them with them, and yeah, Willow. I was working for them at the time when I talked to her. I don't know if she still is, but it was her brush. So real quick, she created I think with them. Yeah. Um, with the clouds, are you using the same? perspective technique as you did with the waves yeah actually yeah that's good i didn't mention that but yes so with the cloud with the sky it's the opposite so you're going to be smaller at the horizon and getting larger at the top yes that's a good point thank you whoever brought that up that was a good thing to notice cassie thank you cassie plus four points for cassie yeah cassie noticed that thank you I forgot to mention it, but yes, exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. We're going to do the same exact thing, only, you know, always your horizon line is your farthest point away. So as you go up in the sky, it's going closer overhead. It's getting closer to you. Um, so they're going to get bigger up higher, which seems weird because you're, everything that's going away from you down here is getting smaller, but... Um, at the horizon line, that switches up and it starts getting bigger again. Let me use some light pink, light orange down here, and call that good. I'm just going to kind of scrub along my horizon line and just soften up that transition between the dry brushing here. Just a little texture and little shine on there just softening up that edge because I got I had a little bit of bleed over on my on my whatever um you know what I'm saying my dark blue kind of bled over into my sky a little bit right there I'm going to use the zinc white so once I kind of get my clouds in then I then I like to use the zinc white I could even use this background blue color if I need to like if it looks too harsh I'll use that too but use that um zinc white and it's transparent so it's not going to overwhelm this and I'm just going to soften up some of these areas if they look a little harsh or feel like they need a little a little softening so I do have some dark some kind of weird colors happening here probably need a little bit more of my blue up in in there but again I don't want to spend too much time we've already an hour, over an hour here I wanted to kind of keep this as close to an hour as I could tonight just to kind of keep it keep it simple because Mark's hungry try not to over complicate it so hey real quick and dinner yeah and exactly dinner too but also yeah go ahead Does everybody know about patreon oh uh, yes uh, so we got traceables mm -hmm. and bonus content go into a little bit more depth yeah i'll show you what we're doing in our ten dollar level here we're working on animals of africa right now so we'll be filling this up with all kinds of different animals um this is part of a, a series that, that i'm doing with them and we work on it once a week um, until we're done. So we just kind of <laughs> pick a project and we kind of work on it slowly and um, really show every step of the, the design process. That is a $10 level. And then the $5 level, we do like a once a month longer video that's our, called our bonus video that's got uh, projects that are just, you know, too long to do on YouTube. So this one was like a four, three and a half, four hour, I think, video. Um, it, it was over, four, I think it was over four hours, because um, I remember we did it in two parts. So anyhow, that's the $5 level, and that includes traceables as well. So the $2, $2 level is traceables only, um, and that's just the free traceables that are, or not free, the free video traceables. So From the, YouTube. The YouTube videos, yeah, traceables for those uh, like since one. 2017. All right, I'm going to get some of the magenta from the sky, and I'm going to start just add a little bit of glaze and, or water, either one. If you don't have glaze, don't, don't worry about it. Just add some water. It's okay. And I'm going to use that in my water here. And just add a little pink tone. This just kind of freshen it up and make it look closer to what's happening in the sky. And I'm going to kind of, kind of darken up that pink right at the horizon line too just a little bit. Don't use a ton of paint. You want mostly, it should be very see-through. 
So this is, we're not trying to cover anything here. We're just trying to see how it tints on top. It will grab onto that color, any of your lighter colors, and it will create a, a new tint. It'll shine through. Okay, I'm gonna get some of my yellow and do the same thing with my yellow. Might even add a little bit of that magenta to it to kind of make it a little bit more orangey. And let's do that in a few places. And there's one thing that I noticed that I didn't do yet. And it is make a nice dark shadow underneath. So we've got this surf meeting that dark, the light um, shoreline. I need a dark shadow on my surf line right there. So I'm gonna get that burnt, what was it, burnt sienna and, and uh, quinacridone magenta. And I'm gonna go right up under my surf line and do a very thin little line that will push that perspective. So this is exactly what we're doing with our mark making. When you put that darker color underneath your lighter color, it pops that lighter color forward, gives it a little bit more form. Now it looks like it is three-dimensional, just like that, very easy. And I'm going to kind of do it right along this line too, just a little bit, uh, maybe get a little bit of just a little bit of extra detail down there. And I'm going to call that good. I'm not. I, I'm going to resist the urge to keep messing <laughs> with this because I that is my n normal thing to do. Um, I, I kind of feel like I want to brighten up just a little bit in this first, like this first half section. So here's my shoreline to her, per horizon line. I want like this section right here just to be a little bit brighter in a few areas. So I'm going to get my, I'm going to get a little glaze in my lightest value and just kind of pop in some of that in some of these areas where I've got some open space. Don't go up too close to anything else, but let's go ahead and kind of right, that looks good. Yeah, that'll bring that forward again. It'll bring that little that little section forward to having more contrast in it in that lighter color towards the bottom here. Okay, like it. So hopefully you guys will take this and try it and maybe uh, share with me your, your little homework, your yes, activity. And, and what was the uh, hashtag Sheets. you should be using? Hashtag uh, T-A-G, tag uh, Thankful Art Goals, um, tag 23 for 19, tw or 2023, what year is it? 2023, <laughs> 1923. Okay, so hold on here. Hashtag tag. Mm-hmm, T-A-G, uh -huh. 23. 23. And what do we call it, want to call it? Marks? Let's of course. Marks. Okay. Hashtag tag twenty three marks. Mm -hmm. All one word. Let me do it. Yeah. Right here. Hashtag T A G thankful art goals twenty three marks. Okay. So that's that's it. This one for the color string. If you do this one. This one is hashtag T-A-G 23 ombre. Like that. Okay. So whenever you're posting these, um, if you tag me, um, put this at the very bottom of the post, and I will be able to um, search for those and find them 
and then we can share them in our newsletter or whatever. And if you're not part of our newsletter crew, um, you can sign up for that on my website. It is thankfulart.com. Um, and we're going to have a brand new website soon. Hopefully, oh my gosh, we're so close. <laughs> we're so close to the new website. Um, we've been working on it for over a year. <laughs> it's taken way longer. We were supposed to have it ready last April, so that tells you how long it's taken. But we, it should hopefully be way um, easier to interact with our videos, see everything we've got to offer, and find free stuff and all kinds of fun stuff. So okay, um, thankfulart.com, you can sign up for our newsletter, and that will also keep you informed and we know all of the new videos that we're going to be doing. Um, we'll come up with our February schedule probably next week. So you'll be able to see that, that first before it even posts. And then um, you'll keep, you know, you, you'll be able to see, like, we will take some of these examples from our homework ac activities. We always feature at least one person at the very end of the newsletter, um, show their art. And um, so anyhow, yeah. So I hope you guys participate. I hope you enjoy this. And, um, you yeah, let me know in the comments if you um, think it's a good idea and want to see more. I'm hoping to have something, some sort of activity for you to do with each video. Even if you don't do this project, you'll have something that you can work on and build your skills. Okay, here we go. What? Super chat. Yes. Super chat. Excellent. Okay. More cowbell. First super chat <laughs> is, was from Cindy. Uh, no specific message, but she was happy that her super chat was working again. So. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much. I want to say Cindy is the one that was saying that she wanted to do a seascape with just sea and sky because there was somebody that posted okay. in the group today that said that. And then we have one from Karen says thank you for oh, the tutorial, you, Angela, Aww. with the little wave. Thank you very much. Oh, I like the wave. Yeah. Oh. And then we had one from. From Leanne. Leanne. Oh, so thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for those. Super and sweet. You guys are so generous. Yes. So Leanne, Love that. Karen, and Cindy. Wonderful. Right. Now we have some questions. Okay. I'm going to sign this while you guys are okay. asking. Okay. Uh, Evelyn wants to know, has Angela ever used clear gesso? I have. Yes. Evelyn. Yes. Um, I used it, um, on wood. I did ornaments and I used it on wood. I also have used it on grab that, um, that, well, I don't know if you're gonna be able to get to it cause it's got so much stuff that right there. Mm hmm. There's paper in there. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if I have it on anything else. Okay. But you have. Um, G clear gesso, if you get matte paper, what I was going to show you was matte paper that you use to frame, you know, prints or whatever. Um, you can buy it in a lot of times either frame shops or like Hobby Lobby will sell them in 8x10 sizes or whatever. Just their rejects because they've cut around it and they have all these open areas in the middle from, you know, that they don't use. Yeah, blanks basically. Um, wasted um, things. So they'll end up cutting them into shapes and things and you can buy them in bulk for really cheap. And what I did was took the clear gesso and I would paint that over the top of that to seal it really well and then you could paint on it just like a canvas and because it's acid free it holds up pretty well um it's not like super sturdy but you can still like pop it in a frame it's great for practicing and i would use it in my kids classes all the time we would do mixed media and like glue stuff on it and all kinds of stuff so yeah the clear gesso is great because it like seals that anything paper um or wood or whatever it seals it makes it really um easy so that you can like with the wood i didn't want to paint directly with paint onto wood because it can it can be uh rough on your brushes and um so that clear gesso leaves that wood grain though for you it does kind of cloud it up just a little bit so you kind of know that going in but but yeah works great okay. all right and tmi she didn't need to know all that i'm sure but <laughs> <laughs> i've seen artists i don't yeah. artists don't like using black paint in their paintings and they mix a darker color instead so does it matter if you don't mix paint 
Um, you, I, I think that there is something to be said for uh, mixing your own colors. It really does help you. But um, I think also for like when you're first starting out, sometimes color mixing can be a little overwhelming. So buying um, sets like Arteza has really good sets that have like all these mixed colors. Um, I know Liquitex Basics has some really good mixed colors. So they, they'll have like things like light magenta that are already like have white added and maybe another color or something like that. Um, so those kind of colors, if you uh, are really great to have, but but yeah, I I also don't really like using black a whole lot. I do use it some, like I used it today, but I use it very sparingly. I don't use it too much because what it can do do is kind of dull your colors, and um, if you want to keep your paintings looking, you know, fresher and more vibrant, mixing your own black um, is a really good way to go. So I like to use like burnt umber and ultramarine blue to mix a black. I use phthalo blue and green when I want to mix a black for like a green, um, uh, phthalo green and, and doxazine purple. What did I say? I think I said something different there. Phthalo, <laughs> phthalo green, uh, like either yellow shade or blue shade doesn't really matter. And doxazine purple makes a beautiful black for greens, so landscapes and things like that. Um, turquoise and thalo, uh, thalo turquoise and um, quinacridone magenta will make a really beautiful dark navy um, black. And then you could add like a little bit of a of a yellow or or a little bit of a green in it to make it a little bit more. Um, even more intense or like an orange, I guess more, um, anyhow, there's all kinds of, and then we created our black ish black, right. Um, with our phthalo blue and, um, um, burnt sienna. And then we, I did add a little tiny bit of black to it in here, but I had those other colors as my main colors. So when I'm going for a dark area, I don't generally just go to black. I will pick a purple or something like that and mix it in with my color, like a dark blue, a, a color that's already dark here will make a really beautiful dark black. Um, and it'll have a little bit of more life to it because it's got a little color in there. So that's it. But no, I wouldn't say like, don't do it ever. If that's all you've got, that's all you've got. Just use it. Use what you've got. And, you know, until you can afford to buy more than, you know, but, but I would practice on paper too. So take your colors that you have and, and do like color mixing with them. Do things like, like that color string and see what you can get. Maybe instead of using a light color and a dark color, you can use two complementary colors. So see what happens when you use like a red and a green and what colors you can get. And sometimes you'd be surprised at even like a yellow and a purple or something, you can get some like dark, dark colors um, that are that turn black, you know, um, just by mixing like complementary colors. So try that and see what kind of blacks you can get too. So... Well, we were busy doing all that. We had another super chat come what? in. What? From Deanne. Oh, thank you, Deanne. Yeah. Thank you for bringing such a blessing to all of us. Oh, you're welcome, Deanne. Thank you. This is really a blessing for me, too. You guys do not even know. We were just talking about how many years I was a stay-at-home mom. I spent, you know, we, we, we sacrificed. I did not go out and work. I stayed home with my kids. Not that that was a sacrifice. We, we didn't have vacations. We didn't, you know, we didn't have a lot of the extra stuff, but we, we invested in our kids and now they're all grown. And now I'm able to do this kind of stuff that I've been wanting to do all along, which obviously YouTube wasn't even here when I was growing, you know, my kids were growing up. So, um, I think our, our youngest was about 10 when I started doing YouTube. So um, he's grown up with me doing this. It was it was great. You know, he was already at school and I was able to kind of, you know, start to trying to create a career of my own. And um, so, yeah, I feel like you guys have been there through thick and thin with me and just really supported me. And um, yeah, I still feel like I am a stay at home mom. And what am I doing doing this mm -hmm. <laughs> amongst all of you guys who, you know, I feel like sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, um, but I've been painting long enough that I at least try to kind of pass on what I know, you know, for good or bad. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, 
Yeah, so I'm glad you're getting something out of it, Deanne. Thank you so much um, for your donation to our channel, and thank you all for your support, those who've watched us, and there are many, many of you that have watched us right from the very beginning of our channel and before Mark was even helping me. Yeah. So some of our oldest channels, our channel uh, videos are very, very rough. <laughs> so amazing. We have followers. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then one last comment, no okay. question. With cloud, less is more, but with flower, more is more. <laughs> yes. That's from a... I agree, Jazz. One of our unusual suspects. Very true. Very true. With clouds, <laughs> less is more. With flowers, more is more. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Jazz obviously knows me very well. <laughs> I'm surprised there's no flowers in this painting. Exactly. Hey, we could pop a few in. You never know. Yeah. Right. Could throw in a palm tree, whatever you want to do. <laughs> the sky, the, it's it's unlimited. Now that you know how to create your own seascape, I, I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. So um, anyhow. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your evening. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>